Today, we're using an open source AI agent to save hours by automating real research end to end, pulling from different sources and formats, analyzing for trends, and updating tasks in Asana without context switching. If you've ever spent a day in 50 tabs, jumping between blogs, videos, PDFs, and spreadsheets, copy-pasting snippets into notes, trying to systemize it into something you or your team can act on, you know the pain. In this video, I hand the entire research phase to an AI assistant that runs locally, speaks MCP to connect to tools like Brave Search, YouTube transcripts, and Asana, and returns a clean brief with links, highlights, and next steps. It applies to research for content creation, industry research, competitive analysis, architecture decisions, and more. If you are a developer, a tech or product leader, you always need a reliable way to collect fresh signals, synthesize them into something people will read, and land output exactly where your team acts on it. The agent is called Goose. But the point is the pattern, less context switching, fewer interruptions, ability to run locally, integration with dozens of tools, and a high quality result that feeds exactly where your work lives. Thanks to Vlog for creating this amazing open source agent and for supporting this video. Watch till the end to see the exact configuration and flow I used in both UI and CLI, and how to adapt it to your stack without vendor dependency. We're diving into a practical automation pattern for research with one of my favorite open source agents. It runs locally, it's extensible through MCP servers, and it works in both desktop UI and CLI. The goal is simple, hand the entire research phase of a task to an assistant and get back a concise, actionable result. This is a problem-solving workflow that eliminates context switching, compresses hours of tab wrangling into minutes, and raises the quality bar at the same time. To start, we will need API keys or access tokens for Asana. That's what I use for my task management and updates. And Brave Search for current web context. We'll also be using YouTube transcripts as one of the primary source signals from videos. If you'd like to use other tools or systems, there is an MCP extension library you can choose from. First, we need to install Goose. There is an option to install a desktop version or a CLI. We'll be using both. Once Goose is installed and running locally, we can start the UI. There is a place to choose and configure which models Goose will work with for planning and synthesis, choices like OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, Light LLM. We can use any provider and even custom providers. Just plug in your API keys. Next, we need to configure our tools and extensions. We need to connect to Asana, Brave Search, and YouTube Transcript through MCP. MCP is doing the heavy lifting here. It needs the agent logic stable while tool swap in and out, so the same setup can target Jira, Linear, or different provider later. The advantage is composability. There is no glue code, no SDK churn. Here is what is currently in my Asana board. Let's ask Goose to list my open research tasks. It calls the tool, filters by tasks, by the right project name and status, and shows me the results. Let's pick semantic search versus keyword search versus hybrid search and ask for a web scan that prefers recent and implementation heavy sources. Goose uses Brave Search MCP server to pull a clean set of links with titles and URLs. I immediately ask for a summary to be posted to the task. When we go back to Asana, we see the new information already added and summarized here. No copy-paste, no context switch. For the next stage of research, we ask for 10 relevant videos from the last few months, fetch the transcripts, and summarize the insights. We can specify the details of what exactly we care about, and it will focus on that. We see that Goose is making calls to both the search and the YouTube transcript tools to get the information. It then posts transcript insights to the same task we never leave the app and everything lands where we expect it. We then merge web 
findings and transcript highlights into a single synthesis. We ask Goose to produce a single analysis and a proposal for a video script. I'd like to ask it to rewrite the whole thing in my style. Plain English, direct, no fluff, with a tip that it can see my style on my YouTube channel. And here we go, we see an update in Asana with the proposed video script and analysis. For completeness purposes, let's also ask Goose to close the task and visualize my open and closed research tasks for the month. You might have noticed that Goose has an auto visualizer extension that is really useful when you need to display charts or other visuals to help you conveniently display information. Here, when we asked Goose to show a chart for open tasks, it displayed this beautiful diagram for us. The result is a self-contained research artifact with follow-ups and a simple status view. It took minutes instead of hours and I never touched a browser tab manager. That's the real win. Fewer switches, fewer interruptions, fewer places for the work to get lost. Now let's switch to the CLI. Same agent, same MCP servers, different interface. In the CLI, there is also a convenient way to configure models, switch between them or change settings. If we need to add a new extension, the CLI workflow follows a step-by-step -step pattern that guides us through selecting the extension, choosing a run command, environment variables, and so on. We have configured model settings, registered Brave Search, YouTube transcript, and Asana. Let's run a new task. Let's ask Goose to pull up our open tasks again. This time, I want it to help me with research for the October newsletter on open source AI. We will ask it to scan the web for developments in the last 30 days, prefer the official repos and maintainer posts, review five relevant technical videos, pull transcripts, and produce a landscape note with links and the watch list. The run is headless and non-interactive. Collection synthesis and updates happen without me touching a UI. The artifact lands in Asana with links and follow-ups ready. As you see, this pattern is not limited to creator workflows. In security, we can ask Goose to pull the, the past week CVEs for our stack. We can cluster them by component, summarize exploitability from maintainer notes, link POCs and open tickets per service with patch links. In platform and architecture, we can ask for a focused evaluation of hybrid search at scale with current guidance on filters, ANN choices, real anchors, latency envelopes, and cost nodes. And we will end with a decision checklist that matches our constraints. In data and machine learning, we can ask for a survey of recent repos and papers on evaluation, retrieval, extract metrics and data sets, and produce a short comparison with recommended baselines. For product and competitor tracking, we can ask for a monthly delta across releases, engineering blogs, and conference talks with an impact summary and roadmap follow-ups. But the skeleton stays the same every time. We collect, synthesize, update, and proceed with next steps. And because everything posts into Asana or your system of record, the thread is visible and auditable. Now you've seen the end-to-end -end flow. Same agent, same pattern, UI for ad hoc, CLI for headless. The outcome is the same every time. A concise brief with links, clear next steps and updates posted in your project tracker. So we have less context switching, more time back and better decisions. My recommendation is to start with one project and load one recipe at first. Measure cycle time and track whether the artifact is used in a real decision. If adoption is low, tighten the structure and shorten the output. If adoption is high, expand to another team or another domain. Keep the stack minimal. The path to value here is speed, clarity, and zero friction between research and action. Quality always needs guardrails. So I always scope searches with recency windows and preferred domains. I ask for concise artifacts with inline links and a force structure. 
a short brief, what the industry agrees on, what is still debated, what is missing and needs testing, and what we should do next. I prefer primary sources whenever possible. So maintainer posts, official repos, conference talks. Transcripts are a cheat code for extracting the how, not just the headline. I also ask for caveats and a simple confidence estimate, so it's clear when a human should dig deeper. With everything posted into Asana, nothing lives in a private note. It's reviewable, shareable, and connected to action. Now, some of the other things I noticed while using Goose for a while. I really love that it is open source, it runs locally, and it can be driven from the UI or the CLI. Goose has a rich ecosystem of extensions. We can connect to many external tools and MCP servers. The agent stays focused on reasoning and orchestration, and we get stable agent and a swappable tool layer. We can also easily create recipes. Recipes make the workflow portable across machines and teams. This is how we go from a cool demo to an operating rhythm that actually shifts in production. Recipes package extensions, prompts, and settings into a reusable workflow. We define it once and run it without rewriting steps. That gives us repeatability, faster runs, fewer mistakes, and no context switching. We can version control recipes in Git, we can tune them over time and hand the same flow to a teammate or a CI job with identical results. Sub agents and sub recipes let us scale the same discipline across bigger problems. Break the research into focused lanes like search, transcripts, trend analysis, Asana updates. Then orchestrate them as nested jobs that report back into one clean brief. We keep the speed and quality without drowning in orchestration. These features are still experimental. There is also an amazing grant program for open source projects that use Goose. If you're building something useful with it, it's a path to support and visibility for small teams and solo builders that can unlock time and cover some of the costs. If you want the exact prompts and the starter recipe I used, tell me and I'll share the minimal setup so you can drop it into your workflow and extend it for your stack. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.